Well, good morning. Uh, survived another long Friday morning walk with uh, with Jock, and uh, he posted one of his videos just earlier today. He's very cheeky. That's all I can say. Um, anyway, um, here is a um, a very very popular subject. Eric Jose talking about Mr. Hilligus. Let's just jump straight in, shall we? Yeah. Share screen, share sound. Done. I think we have this one here. That looks about it. Click on share. Yep, that's looking good. Okay, okay. Let's move that up there. And let's click on play and enjoy just a short video uh, talking about Mr. Hilligus. Hello everybody, you have tuned in to Eric Jose on Making a Murderer on YouTube. I cover virtually any aspect of making a murderer. I go over the evidence, the documents, the photos. So if you'd like, stay tuned and in the future I'll have many more videos besides the one you're about to see. The other thing I like about StreamYard is that if there's ever a glitch in your internet Hello folks, how you doing? We're here today to talk about, let's say, the Ryan Hillegas situation, okay? Now, I see a lot of people out there, some of them commenting on my channel, some of them in, on Twitter and stuff, about how she should have never named Ryan. Why would she name Ryan? That's, you know, ridiculous or whatever. Well, let's, let's look at that claim for a second. To anybody that watched the documentary that maybe didn't pick up on it, there was something called the Denny motion. Okay, Kratz files it at the beginning of the trial. It, it had it was it had just caught on at the time of Stephen's trial, and it, it's the Denny motion is in its concept, in its in what it's meant to do. It's well-meaning. Okay, what it does is it limits the amount of people that that the, the defendant can just like point the finger at and say, well, they could have done it instead of me, or they could have done it instead of me. So to limit the, the basically bogging down the court and everything, pointing at a bunch of suspects that may, that there isn't like enough for them to really be a suspect, things like the Denny motion it come up. So it's the Denny motion in Wisconsin. And what it means is you have to be able to prove that there was, uh, that the person had, uh, the, the means, the motive, and the opportunity to perform the crime. They have You have to have all three, means, motive, and opportunity. Now, where this runs into a problem with the Stephen Avery case, in my opinion, is because in the Stephen Avery case, the prosecution did not have to offer a motive. Okay? They pinned this whole thing on Stephen without a motive. Well, it seemed, it, to me... Ever since I learned about this, to me it has seemed massively unfair that Stephen had to prove a motive uh, if he wanted to present another suspect, but the prosecution didn't to prosecute him. So I always thought that that was odd. So I honestly feel that the Denny motion should be amended to say that if the prosecution is not offering a motive, then the defendant can offer suspects who may not have the strongest motive or don't have a motive or whatever, or something like that. Uh, it should be an even playing field, in my opinion, because the way Denny has worked in this case is really unfair. I mean, seriously, the prosecution, like I said, did not have to prove a motive. They didn't have to, they didn't, have to offer any kind of a motive in order to prosecute Stephen, but in order for Stephen to to present other suspects, he had to prove motive. So that's just my thoughts on that. So that brings us to talking about Ryan Hillegas. Okay, the reason why Zellner named Ryan Hillegas is because he meets the extreme requirements of the Denny motion. Okay. She, after getting the detective to go and look into 
Teresa in, in his past found out that he there was an abusive past between him and Teresa. There it went. He already had that's that's basically the motive that he was he was not over her that they that they were that they had a bit of an abusive relationship so that the fact that she was pulling away and going out with other men could have could have set him off and brought that abusive side out of him and he went too far so th yes it's hypothetical but the point is is that with the new information that her PI picked up about Teresa and Ryan's relationship it now it, Ryan now meets the requirements of the Denny motion that is why she mentions Ryan in the in the in the document she's mentioning Ryan because she can she has a suspect that meets that high standard that's what it, that's what it is when it comes down to it so people are like talking like she did this frivolously or something like that I don't know but no it wasn't frivolous it's just she was able to offer a another suspect somebody else to look at and to be quite honest people the fact that the prosecution missed all this information the first time around it's taking now you know 15 years later 12 13 years later to get this for this information to come out see because had had anybody looked into Ryan at all and, and Teresa at all this would have came up and the defense would have had that as part of discovery at Stevens trial and they would have been able to offer Ryan as a suspect so you see why it's important that's why it's important I don't know so what else I'm gonna show you here is more shady stuff by Ryan okay right I'm the guy got suspect for a reason. Anybody who is in doubt of why the guy got suspect, I don't know what to say. I mean, the guy, the way he acts on the stand, the duping delight that he displays on the stand, uh, the way that him, him, the way that he acts when he's asked about if he had ever been on the Avery property, and the way he gets all stuttery, and the way he starts acting then, and I, just. Gosh, and the way he is on the stand, the way he's so dodgy. I mean, I have a few videos about Ryan. The the guy does not come off as honest. He seems like he's hiding something. And then you find out something like I'm about to show you right now. Okay? We all know that one the front driver's side taillight and stuff was kind of broken off of Teresa's RAV4. Okay? During the time of the investigation, I'm going to show you a document right now, where during the time of the investigation... They were checking out the RAV4 at the lab, and so some questions came up. They found the, the parking light in it, inside of the, the RAV4. They determined it came from the RAV4, the front driver's corner or whatever, from the RAV4. Um, and then what you're going to see later on in the document is Ryan Hillegas offers an explanation for why the taillight is broken. Okay, so we're going to see that right now, and then we'll come on back. Okay, so up at the top here, we see where it says, Special Agent Fassbender was informed that, as a result of a, of a search of the vehicle, they had not located any receipt book, telephone, camera, not any keys. They did, however, locate a blue athletic type bag, at which time the contents were unknown, and a broken light. Special Agent Fassbender was advised that he... The, was advised that the light was apparently from Hallbach's vehicle and was from the, park, the parking lamp from the right front of the vehicle. Then down at the bottom here, Special Agent Fassbender ultimately spoke to Ryan Hillegas, a friend of the Teresa Hall box. Hillegas did some checking with the family and friends and reported back to Special Agent Fassbender that Hallbach had, in fact, damaged the parking light area of her car and actually made an insurance claim. Hillegas advised that Hallbach took a cash payout for the damage and had not repaired it. Okay, so there you see clearly Ryan telling Special Agent Fassbender that an insurance claim was made regarding that parking lamp and that Teresa had gotten a cash payout and just hadn't fixed it yet. So basically saying that damage was already known to be done to the RAV4. So therefore, 
in case they were thinking it might have happened in whatever was going on. No, he wanted to. He basically tells him that so that they don't think that it got damaged in the process of her getting kidnapped and and whatever happened. So there it is. He explains it nice and nice and neat. Okay, there that explains that, right? Okay, well, now we're going to find out that there was never, ever an insurance claim made on it. All right, here we go. This is from the insurance company that held pre Teresa's policy at the time. Dear Attorney Zellner, you served a subpoena in the above captioned action seeking any record for policy number blah, 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 Wisconsin listed to Teresa M. Halbach reflecting a claim for damage to the driver's side parking light between 2003 and 2006. Pursuant to your subpoena, Erie has made a diligent and exhaustive search of its records and finds no such claims to have been made presented under Erie policy, blah, 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 between the years of 2003 and 2006 perta pertaining to Patricia M. Halbach. As such, the, the Erie has no records to provide. Okay, so... There you have it, folks. That's yet another reason why Ryan Hillegas continues to be suspect. The reason why he's suspect is because of all the things about him. I mean, the, the scratches on his hands uh, during the search. Um, I mean, it's just so many things with him that are just odd, that are just, you know, s strange. Um, not least of which is his t the way he testifies. I mean, he just, he doesn't know anything. I swear, he doesn't know anything. Any question you ask him, I don't know. I can't be sure. Uh, it could have been, I don't know. Doesn't know if it's day or night. I mean, it's just, I mean, yeah. I mean, there's so much, I mean, I don't know. There should be no question why Ryan Hillegas gets suspect. <laughs> it's just. The way, I mean, it's just, he is suspect. He screams out suspect. He, he screams out, investigate me. I mean, I don't know. And and obviously he wasn't. Because here we are now. Uh, let's see, the trial was in 2007. So here we are 10 years after the conviction. And we're, and, and we're just now getting this information out. It's proof that the, that the investigation was not good. That the, that the investigation was poor. And if you don't believe it from this, then you better believe it from the fact that look at the way that Ken Kratz acts when Judge Willis asks him about those deleted voicemails. And he asks him, does the state know who deleted those voicemails? And do you see the way Kratz acts? Yeah. Okay. And deflects it. And somehow Judge Willis buys his deflection. And that's it. That's the end of it. So... These these are the these are the things that show us the poor investigation. It, it just everything culminates into a huge problem with this case, despite what the state says and continues to say. I mean, for, they still think that they still think that that Brendan's confession was voluntary. I mean, that that really just says it all right there, you know. A kid was led down a path. They knew they were leading him down a path. So, anyways, that's about it here, folks. Just wanted to go ahead and point out just yet another dodgy thing about Ryan. And at the same time say, hey, you can't be surprised that this guy's a suspect. You just can't. I'll leave my Ryan Hillegas video, the link to my Ryan Hillegas video below in the info. Uh, if you want to go check it out. And uh, if you haven't already, please hit subscribe. Well, cheers, dude. Very interesting. Um, maybe when when we were in Wisconsin, had we met up with Ryan Hilligus, I'm sure that we could have persuaded him to have given us some more information. But to, in a in a dark alleyway somewhere, I'm sure we could have you could have persuaded him, dude. But anyway, um, not only is Ryan, a, you know, a suspect should have been a suspect in 0567, but he's still a suspect. And for me, as you all know, particularly suspect are the comments uh, by Mike Halbach. Um, and Ryan and Mike are thick as thieves, aren't they? Yeah. Anyway, um, I've got another video to, uh, to do very shortly, which I will post. And then this evening, 
looking forward to having a chat with uh, some great Daniel Holtzclaw supporters. Um, but Cherie has come up with some interesting um, information about the uh, Wisconsin Court of Appeals. Um, so we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, Wisconsin making a murderer, Daniel Holtzclaw, um, and Daniel's great supporters. So hopefully we'll catch you seven o'clock this evening for that one live. Um, and I'll post the other two videos, this one shortly, and the next one later on today. Okay, catch you soon. Bye for now.